Hello everyone, my name is Asisi Pombingileli and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video guys, we'll be answering two um, brain related questions from previous question papers. So this is the first one that we are going to answer. Again guys, please, please, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is free. It does not cost you anything to subscribe. Please also like this video, share it with your classmates and your schoolmates and also please do comment down below. Now, this is really one section of the nervous system where you can get full marks because very, very, very easy. Also, guys, please do watch the video till the end because I do break down the question for you and explain the answers. So please do watch till the end. Okay, let us look at this question 3.3. Refer to the diagram below. This question actually is from, an, no, it's not November, June 2024 question paper, June 2024. Give the names of the parts labeled. They will always ask you this type of a question from these diagrams, guys. The name, the letter to measure the function, blah, blah, blah. Easy piece of stuff. The names of the part labeled C and D. So C is obviously the cerebellum. Cerebellum. Um, one mark. Then D. Oh, there is D. So, where is it pointing at? Oh, here. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. So, D is the medulla or medulla. Medulla oblongata. Uh, one mark. Then, three, three, two. Give the function of B. So, there is B. So give the function, they are not asking you to name um, structure B, you just need to give us the function. So we know that is the corpus callosum. So it will allow communication between the left and right hemisphere of the cerebrum. Um, or you can say it connects um, the left and right hemisphere of the cerebrum to max. So let me find space. So it allows, so you can say it connects. That's an N and another N. Let me write it nicely. It connects. Or you can say it allows communication between the left, between the left and right hemisphere hemisphere of the cerebrum give the letter and name give the letter and name of the part that would probably be damaged if the part that will be that will probably be damaged sorry if a person suffered hearing loss after a car accident so if a person uh, got involved in a car accident and suffered a hearing loss. Give us the name and the letter of the part that would probably be damaged. This is very easy. 333. Three, three. The part that will obviously be damaged, guys, will be the cerebrum. And the letter for the cerebrum, let's see. That is letter A. Letter A. That is cerebrum. Okay. Then a brain tumor is a mass or growth of cells in the brain, which may affect the normal functioning of the brain. A young girl is taken to hospital as she is experiencing a loss of balance and fine motor skills. She is diagnosed with a brain tumor. Explain in which area of the brain the tumor is growing. So they are saying this particular girl is experiencing a loss of balance. So that is um, basically guiding you. Is experiencing a loss of balance and also what? Fine motor skills. So 
they are saying she is diagnosed with this brain tumor. So tell us by explaining in which area of the brain is the tumor growing. These two have guided you. They've given you the answer, guys. So the cerebellum, sorry, cerebellum, since obviously is responsible for balance, that's the one that is going to be damaged since this girl is experiencing a loss of balance. Um, um, yeah, so remember the cerebellum is responsible for balance and coordination. Um, so if it is damaged, obviously coordination and balance will be lost. There you go. The cerebellum is damaged due to no coordination of the voluntary movements by the cerebellum. Also, the cerebellum, we know that it's responsible for balance and coordination. All right, let's look at the next question. Second question, 2.4. Um, same style of questioning, guys, when it comes to the brain. Same style of questioning. So the diagram below represents part of the central nervous system of a human. You are given the diagram of the brain. Identify part C. There is part C. Ah, need to decrease the thickness. There is part C, um, which is obviously the spinal cord. Spinal cord. Then gland E. There is gland E. That's the pituitary gland, pituitary gland, or you can say hypophysis. Okay, that's one mark, one mark. Then give the letter of the part that controls voluntary actions. Remember, you have involuntary and voluntary. So on this particular question, they are asking about voluntary actions. Those are controlled by part A. Letter A. Describe the location of the corpus callosum. There is the corpus callosum. There is the corpus callosum. They are asking you to describe the location. So that's basically between the hemispheres, between the left and the right hemisphere. Or no, 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 that's the function. I'm not giving you the function. No, no, no. So the location between the hemispheres hemispheres of the cerebrum cerebrum the two marks is at the end right two four four very similar scenario to the one that we've just covered in the first question elena suffered a brain injury during a rugby match he could still breathe properly remember this information that they're giving you is very important the information that they're giving you is important. Um, they're telling you that this Lena is able to breathe properly, but he experienced occasional loss of memory and balance. Now we have to think clearly. You need to know which part of the brain is responsible for breathing and which part of the brain is responsible for memory and balance. First question is asking us to explain why the Lena could still breathe properly. Remember, breathing is controlled by the medulla oblongata. So that means the medulla oblongata is not injured or damaged in this case. That is why he's still, I'm not sure, okay, he, Rabbi, obviously. That is why the Lena is still able to breathe properly. So you can obviously say, because, because they're saying, explain why. Because the medulla oblongata which controls breathing that's the one that controls breathing which controls breathing was not injured because if the medulla oblongata um, was injured this learner would not be able to breathe properly okay explain why it is possible that the injury affected part b let's remind ourselves what part b is part b is the cerebellum which is responsible for balance and memory. So the reason, obviously, we're saying um, part B could potentially be uh, damaged. Uh -uh. Explain why it is possible. Yes, um, it's because they've mentioned here that this learner has experienced occasional loss of memory and balance. Okay, so the answer will be because... 
the learner. So they've told us there that the learner is experiencing loss because the learner. Um, experienced loss of memory and balance due to obviously no coordination of voluntary movements by part B. I don't have space for that, but due to no coordination coordination of voluntary movements at part B. Okay, I think part B is our cerebellum. Yes. Okay, last question. Explain why the hearing of the learner could also be affected because of the injury. So the loss of memory indicates a possible injury to part A because part A is responsible for hearing, meaning interpreting or the interpretation of sound. Okay, so the answer will be the loss of memory um, indicates, indicates a possible injury to part A, or you can say to the cerebell to the cerebrum. Oh, don't confuse the two cerebrum and cerebellum. To part A, which is also responsible for hearing, hearing or interpretation of sound.